and well, welcome again to the Aspen Shed. Uh, what I'm going to do now is, uh, as mentioned in the last video, we're going to put the uh, holes in the crankcase back plate and uh, crankcase and uh, crankshaft case so we can screw it all together. Now the way I am going to find the center of this because I explained before uh, I've made a CNC model in, in uh, Fusion 360 and uh, I've got the origin as the center of this piece so the whole the four holes will be laid out from the center. So I've got to be able to pop the center of this so I can use a wiggler to find the center. And the way I do it, and this has probably got absolutely nothing to do with engineering and nobody should take any inferences that this is the way to do it. This is the way it's done in the Aspen Shed. Right, as you can see we've got our granite uh, face plate, stone, uh, and I've got a height gauge. And I was very lucky with the purchase of this height gauge, it came off uh, eBay for 30 quid. Marvellous. It was second hand, but it's not a mark on it. Anyway, what I've done is I've zeroed the dial and now I'm going to measure the height of the back plate. So uh, we wind him up. I'll start at the bottom again because I lost count. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and this was 25.3 I think in the calibers. 4, be a little bit more in this. I'm just checking both axes and there is a slight difference. That side it just Lips on the and that's twenty five point four. And I think when we measured it with the calipers, we had The more you wiggle it, uh, that comes down to 25.31. Try the other side. Twenty five point three six because these increments are not point two, so they're two hundredths of a 
millimetre. I suppose what we should do is get the old um, God, I'm going to say microscope, but it's not a microscope, is it? Anyway, we're going to get the microscope on it. That's a good idea. Let's put the microscope on it. So just hold the line for a second while I find my microscope. Well, <clears throat> after finding my microscope, aka micrometer, um, I measured uh, with my uh, 25 to 50 micrometer, and I've got. Uh, four hundredths of a mil difference between one, one set of sides and the other. So across that way we're 0.36 and across that way we're 0.4. So I'm going to go for what is known as a happy medium. Well I'm going to go for 0.4 and so now I'm going to set this to twelve and a half point four. And I'm going to scribe both both um, axes off that. So we'll fetch this down now to right, twelve point five. And one, two, three, four hundredths. No, uh, um, <sighs> point five and two hundredths to be half of it. There we go. It would be point four for the brain dead, but it's actually uh, point two. It's half of it. So uh, I'll lock that. Doesn't lock very well, that's the only problem with it. And using the tip, I'm going to put a scribe line across that. So I'm going to hold that as vertical as I can. Put that on there. And across. Now that looks about right. Turn it uh, 90 degrees and once more. There we go. And that's going to be our origin for the CNC. I've got the code written, so what I'll do now is I'll just um, pop this with me popper. lines are visible. I can't see until I go and edit the film and then everything is large as life so I'm hoping you can see where we've scribed. I suppose I could have blued it but I didn't. So next thing is to pop it and after I've done that I'll come back and we'll have it mounted in the mill. Right we're over at the mill now and uh, as you can see, I've got the back plate in the chuck. I've got the back plate in the vise, and I've got my stock on, and I've got a couple of um, uh, parallels underneath, just to hold the height in the chuck. In, in the vise. Right, at the minute it's running with a wiggler in the chuck and it's just above the centre pop mark I've made. And the way I test whether I'm on centre is uh, I drop the wiggler into the centre pop and see which way it moves. Obviously you've got to line it up pretty close by eye to start and when you drop it 
you can just detect it moving one way or the other and I adjust it on the DRO on the computer until I get it to do what it's going to do now and it did this, I set it up by eye but it did this the first time so I haven't had to make any adjustments so if I uh, drop it down and pop it into the hole there's absolutely no movement, it doesn't jump one way or the other going in or coming out yes it does I'm a liar it wants to go it wants to go that way just to touch so or just jog it that way What I could see from the side was it was just slightly bouncing towards the front of the jaw. So what I'm going to do is move uh, the Y axis that way and that's here. So uh, put it in the jog mode. of that back plate uh, I'm now just going to touch off my uh, center drill and then we'll go over to the CNC we'll run the CNC G code and see what happens see if we've got it or not This is a silly way of uh, getting your zero, but it works. Just keep uh, jogging it down. Paper's just starting to drag under the cutter. That's about it. So I just set the Z zero on that. Uh, I'll now move the Uh, the center drill to the center of the work so I just press go to zero and there we are we're centered again now uh, I've got the G code loaded I'm just going to now I've moved 
regen the tool path and hopefully uh, I'll start, press start uh, it's going to go up uh, ask for the tool change although it's got the right tool in it let's, uh, let's say all these tools are measured so it should ask me for tool 5 Tool number 13, which, uh, that's what, oh that's right, oh, yeah, well that's what I've got in it now, tool number 13, 3 mil centre drill, okay, and it should come down and stop within 5 millimetres of the work. When it starts, I'm going to slow it right down so we can see what's happening now. And of course it didn't, so we've got to do it all over again. So there's the vagaries of the CNC machining. Right, start again. I just want you to come up to one side piece of paper. Sometimes this machine has some false, false starts and you don't know why. The next time you go to it everything runs perfectly well. Gonna drag on the paper. There, re zero again, rewind the G code, uh, regen the toolpath, and ask it to start again. Except I'll uh, just go to zero. That's it, we're back, ready to go. Off we go again. <laughs> This time it's going to stop within 5 millimetres of the surface. And ready on the stop button. There we go. Right. Thank you very much. Right, I'm just going to uh, I'm going to slow the feed rate down because I want to make sure it's going to do this job properly. Uh, I'm not even locked in. That was a good start, wasn't it? Right, that's tight. Uh, slow it down to 30%. Press cycle start. Switch on the motor. Come to its first position. can see what's happening and it's only packing to port the mill it's going to go a mill deep there we go so that's all right and now let me move to the next position
to one side. Uh, so I mustn't have got the centre. So I'll, I'll just switch off and I'll just have a measure and see what damage I've done. Welcome back. Uh, I'm having another go at uh, doing uh, Spot marks for the rear crankcase cover. Uh, the first attempt, I'm afraid for whatever reason, I got com well not completely wrong, but in a job like this you can either be right or wrong, so it's wrong. Uh, I don't know if it was me centering, I think it was me centering of course. But uh, for one reason or another, it was either the scribed lines they got in the wrong place, so I put the centre out. Something anyway, it was far enough out for it to be useless all over to one side, as I think I said when I first took it off. Anyway, I've made another one. Uh, I've got it centred. I've got the uh, wobbler so when you go down it doesn't move so to me that means it's on centre so now we'll uh, load the g-code uh, load the g-code engine back to the poles uh, I'll just um, change the tools and regain the zero to make sure that that's right. The Z height, I mean. Make sure that the touch off is correct. I've also put the wobbler in a collet instead of the chuck because of the height. I was uh, backing it up too much and uh, once you hit the stops it puts the whole machine out because you've lost your your Z or any other axis so uh, by using a collet I'm not having to raise it so high to get the wobbler out in fact I forgot to tighten it up so it's going to come straight out so there we are that's out collet out Tap with me brass hammer. Pull it away. Give the shank a wipe with your end and pop the center pop, center, center drill in. Just nip it, it doesn't need anything excessive to hold it there. And I will fetch it down and check the Z height. get me technical piece of paper that's touching just fine so that's all right 
Uh, reset the zero. Reset the X, which I nearly got to, forgot on the Y, because we're all slightly moved, so everything's set to zero. Regen the toolpath so it knows where it is. And cycle start. <coughs> Hope it all runs first attempt. The code is set now in Fusion 360, so every time I um, generate some G code out of uh, 360, it includes a tool change. So you specify obviously on the drawing what tool you're using. And it doesn't, regardless of what's in the machine, it will always go to the top to change the tool. So it says, please insert tool number 13, which we have in already. Press OK. The offsets for the tool are already set in, in um, Mach 3. Now, with a bit of luck, it should stop 5 millimeters above the surface it doesn't and that's what I mean about mind of its own the codes exactly what we used before and this time it's the first time you run it you get this problem it thinks it's at plus 14 so there's a hardware issue somewhere but usually when I do it the second time See my lightning reflexes then? Oh god! We'll have to stop and I'll start again. I reset the zero with it over here. What a BF! Sorry about that, folks. We'll come back again. <coughs>